Okay, so our first color we're going to use is going to be some Quaker Gray. It's one of our standby colors. Yeah, we're just going to get a good dry brush. That's kind of more of an overbrush, I guess. It's pretty heavy. But you want to especially hit all those edge pieces and really get it to pick up that grain and any sharp edges that are there. And you can go fairly heavy with this. And it's very, very light. It'll darken a little bit as it dries. And then uh, we'll hit it with our next color. So we'll do this all the way around and come back and get the next color. All right, so that's given that a pretty good appearance. Um, we're going to make that pop a little bit more with some maple sugar tan. And uh, do exactly as we did with the Quaker Gray. Just kind of give it a almost an overbrushing and we'll yeah, put some on and that just kind of gives it a little bit extra and, and really sells that wood texture So we're going to do the rest of the building like that. We'll be right back. All right, so that's our tan dry brush applied. And as you can see, that really, really, hashtag really, really, uh, accentuates that wood grain. All right, so we're going to do, well, we'll do the roof in a bit. We are going to use a sponge and some paint and we will apply some color to this. I'm going to also brush paint these doors. So we'll get started on that. So I've thinned out a little bit of, I guess it's Aegean blue. And we'll apply a little of that. We want it to have a nice, it's thin, so it'll have a nice faded look on there. And we'll let that set a little bit and we'll do this back door same way. Right, that's got a good kind of weathered effect as it is with the uh, washes that I applied earlier. This paint is translucent enough you can really, that shows through. So that, that was kind of helpful. One thing, I, I got a little happy with the super glue. I don't know that you really notice it once we paint that, but in any case, something to be mindful of. All right, so let's find I'm going to go with a little lighter blue, I think. Uh, this is a French blue from our friends at Folk Art. Probably bought this 20 years ago, so who knows if that color is even still around. But anyway, it's a really light blue, so it should be easy to find. And you can use any color for this. I'm just kind of keeping with the theme of the bandit camp and the colors that we're using as I search for a sponge. So I'm going to take this little sponge here. And we'll get a, little, get a little paint on it and kind of dab off most of the excess. And we'll come over here and just start dabbing on some color. And we do this, just gives it kind of a peeling paint look. Leave a little, plenty of that aged wood to show through there. And if you get a little heavy, you just kind of knock it back with that 
a little bit of the sponge. But anyway, just do that all the way around the building. So we'll be right back. All right, so that added a little bit of color. Uh, nice peeling effect. Very weathered. So, all right, we're going to do something similar with the roof. I am going to hit the window pieces with um, probably some lighter gray paint just to try to sort of pick them out a little bit. If you wanted to be really fancy, you could put some clear plastic behind it, and then when you hit it with matte varnish, it would make it look all dirty and, and all that. I'm not going to do that on this one because I want to get it done sometime today, but uh, something to think about for the future. So we'll be right back. Okay, before we do the roof, I wanted to go ahead and do the signage, which I used some uh, barn red and just very carefully sponge that on so it looked like maybe it was peeling. And uh, it wasn't too bright. It set it off from the rest of the building nicely. So I think that worked pretty good. All right, so let's get set up to do the roof. So we painted this the same primer as the rest of the building. And I also hit it with a bit of a black wash just to try and age it a little. And we'll take and overbrush some of our Quaker Gray on there, on the very highest spots. Okay, and uh, it's not coming through exceptionally well on the camera, but it is making a difference. Alright, so we'll finish the rest of that and be right back. So we've got that. Now let's do a follow-up and dry brushing with some silver. That'll help kind of sell that metallic look. If that's photographing exceptionally well but it does give it a very metallic tone all right so we'll knock the rest of that out and be right back all right so we're going to start with a little bit of a wash of burnt umber and just to kind of add a little extra depth. Just kind of where the join is. Sort of help accentuate that. It doesn't take much. That little bit, though, helps. You can take some of these and kind of run some rusty streaks down. I'll do the same up here because we're going to add some rusty patches. You just want to give it a nice aged look. All right, so let's switch palettes. And we'll go to this little one because it's clean. All right, so we want just some straight burnt umber. And we need a, yeah, this will do, uh, kind of a rough brush we can sort of stipple with. I don't know what's going on with my lighting here. So 
So we'll take that and we'll kind of make some patches. fairly irregular. Okay, we'll let that set up just a little bit. to our nutmeg brown. It's almost like we're doing 18th century cooking. There's nutmeg and everything. Okay, you just kind of want to build that up inside that dark area. Although you can have some random spots here and there that are not in there. But as I like to yammer on about, rust is kind of a generally sort of a multi-layered thing until a certain point when everything becomes oxidized and then it's all kind of a chocolatey color and that's not super visually interesting generally so I try to do it to where you can see what something is what it's supposed to look like and then what it's turning into and we need some orange there we go okay so we're gonna take some Vallejo light orange and kind of lightly, we'll sort of knock that back. Where's our sponge? We'll kind of and that will also darken a bit as it dries, so it won't be quite so blazing orange, but we'll knock it back a little bit. That also kind of helps give it a kind of a dry look right off the bat. All right, so that should be pretty good. We'll let that dry for a bit and see what it does. All right, so that didn't come out too bad, I think. Um, one note on the signage, I went back and took some, I think it's Vallejo Black Gray or Vallejo German Gray, and, and hit the tops of those letters just to kind of accentuate that shadow for that 3D effect. And uh, I think that helped a great deal. That kind of made those pop. So at that, I'm going to say that this is ready maybe for some varnish and then the tabletop so hopefully this has been helpful and i hope you guys have enjoyed watching it and if you stayed in this long you are super awesome so i do appreciate it uh remember to like subscribe all that good stuff that they always tell us to tell you but i figure if you like the content you'll do that and if not well you're probably not watching it now anyway so um, i do thank you